What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Tropical Depression Gordon holding on at a very consistent and a very good rate. Right now, we have potential Tropical Cyclone 8 about to make landfall in North Carolina, and we have the Central American Gyre starting to develop and starting to wake up as we are looking at more and more ensemble runs calling for development. So we have a lot to talk about for you guys today, and we have a lot to get into. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. We're going to go ahead and start with tropical to, uh, potential Tropical Cyclone 8 over here. This was supposed to be Tropical Storm Helene. However, things did not pan out, and it only has a 10% probability of developing at this current point in time. Uh, maximum sustained winds have decreased to near 40 miles per hour with higher gusts. Continuing is weakening. It, continued weakening is expected before dissipating over the Carolinas. Tropical storm force winds still extend outward 175 miles from the center. Also taking a look at the radar, it's been absolutely incredible with all the amount of flash flooding that's been going on, especially around the Wilmington area. They're just getting rain band after rain band after rain band right here coming through on the coast. And things have been pretty interesting right there. Flash flood warnings are in effect for areas south of Wilmington, including Oak Island. So you're going to want to pay attention to that. There is still storm surge also expected at this current point so ultimately this system is expected to dissipate but i do want to make it clear that this system did not quote unquote underperform or quote unquote bust at least not in the traditional sense yeah it didn't organize into a tropical storm like some of the models and the nhc was anticipating but the reason it didn't wasn't because it, it, it didn't produce or anything like that or because it didn't have a closed center the Hurricane Hunters did actually find a closed center. I do want to make that perfectly clear. But the reason it wasn't designated tr as a tropical system is because this system was still attached to a, fr a stationary front, a stationary frontal boundary. The low pressure system was to, atta to attach to it. And in meteorology terms, it's a mid-latitude cyclone and not a tropical cyclone. Tropical cyclones, I'm sure a lot of you know this, they do not have fronts attached to them. Whereas mid-latitude cyclones, especially those in the United States, like your winter storms, your severe th uh, weather complexes, those have fronts attached to it. So it didn't exactly underperform or bust in the traditional sense. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't designated a tropical storm or anything like that, but it was because it was attached to the front and not because it it failed to produce because it absolutely did produce. It's causing a lot of flash floodings and tornado warnings across much of the Carolinas as well. And I want to make that 100% clear. And it looks like the Wilmington area did get the absolute brunt of this. So that's definitely something you're going to want to look at and something you're going to want to pay attention to. And we'll have to keep close tabs on that. Also paying attention to Tropical Depression Gordon. Gordon's been doing a good job holding on so far. Let's go ahead and show you uh, the forecast discussion right here. Deep convection has persisted since last night, mainly over the eastern portion of the circulation of Gordon. This activity is limited and not particularly well organized, however, uh, while the coldest cloud tops are near minus 70 degrees Celsius. Based on set objective Dvorak classifications, uh, the advisory intensity is still set at 30 knots, which is 35 miles per hour. The cyclone has been moving generally westward over the past day or so, while embedded with the flow of the south or southeast side of a mid-level ridge. During the next couple of days, the ridge is expected to shift west and weaken while the trough digs to the north and northeast of Gordon. This flow evolution along with the interaction of a developing frontal cyclone about 10 degrees to the north of the tropical cyclone should result in a turn to the north in the next 36 hours. Some of the global models are showing a partial merger of Gordon with the frontal wave, but it appears likely that the system will remain distinct as a tropical cyclone throughout the forecast period because we were talking about this system kind of dying off as a becoming a frontal, becoming just a remnant low, and basically this thing becoming a footnote. But what we're noticing Noticing now is because it's holding on and it's been holding on so far and I can go ahead and show you the satellite imagery with this because all this has been holding on relatively well you're going to start seeing a situation where once it gets out of this very stable and very unfavorable environment over here that consists of just a ton of dry air the wind shear has not been the main issue with this. 
It's mainly been the dry air that's the problem, but in the next 36 hours, it is expected to get start getting out of that and start to rebuild itself and start to replenish, as a lot of the models are forecasting this to get to hurricane strength, but that is way down the road, and we'll still have to pay attention to it, but the system's been doing a good job of holding on and keeping itself alive. Will the system become a hurricane? We'll have to pay attention to it. Westerly vertical shear has abated, but the environment is still a bit dry. The dynamical guidance indicates a further decrease in shear with some increase to the humidities in a few days while the system remains over warm waters. Free strengthening is forecast to begin around 60 hours. In general agreement with the latest intensity guidance, it's then now expected to kind of level off and hold off for the next two days, then start its gradual strengthening period and get up to a 50 mile per hour tropical storm in the next five days. We could definitely see those numbers increase as the system continues to battle all that dry air and all that overall stable environment over there. So we'll have to pay attention to that. Also still paying very close attention to a potential threat, a potential long-term threat that is going on in the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Sea right here. Let's go ahead and show you the Western Atlantic area right here. What we're seeing right here, what we're noticing is the gyre is starting to organize and develop off the coast of Costa Rica, Panama, and into a little bit of Nicaragua. You're starting to see the gyre starting to ramp up a bit, and this gyre is expected to move into the Eastern Caribbean, Eastern portion, uh, East Coast of these countries into the Western Caribbean Sea. And from then on out, this system could organize and develop into a very big system. Right now, I'm putting Cuba on watch. I'm putting Jamaica on watch. Florida, I'm not putting you on watch just yet, even though some models have the system strengthening up pretty quickly and heading towards your area. I'm not putting you on watch yet because of how far out this is. We're about three to four days uh, before the system is going to be kind of meandering and being registered as a low pressure system in the Caribbean Sea. And we have a few more days until the system develops. And we have a little bit more time before the system gets tagged by the NHC as models have been consistently showing an increase of uh, the, uh, of the, of strength and increase of probabilities and an increase of pretty much everything that's been going on. It's been very consistent uptrend as well. And we're also starting to see more guidance of the system. Instead of moving on the east coast of Florida into the Bahamas, we're seeing more guidance having this enter the Gulf of Mexico, which I will say would not be very optimal because it's over that part of the Gulf has remained untapped, even though uh, Francine did tap into a lot of the western part of the Gulf of Mexico. The eastern part has not been tapped yet, and yes, there is a bunch of mesoscale convection over there, but that's not going to end up doing very much. Uh, uh, in the long term at least and where we're at right now yeah there is a bit of dry air moving into the, the western part of the Caribbean Sea over here but it's not going to really affect the gyre I don't think and you are seeing convection starting to pop off in some of those more moist pockets over there so it's not quite uniform just yet and yes there is dry air coming into that but this gyre is expected to bring a huge moisture infusion and the uh, and the U uh, in the ULAC is expected to help uh, boost that quite a bit as the system starts to organize in the next 3 or 4 days or so so ultimately the key takeaways with at least the satellite imagery is things are starting to get into motion. Things are starting to get into action. You're starting to see the gyre beginning to organize and develop. And from then on out, we'll have to see what plays out and how the system will evolve. This is kind of a situation we're going to have to take day by day because this does pose a potential threat to millions of people, if the, at least in the long term, and we will have to pay attention to that. Let's go ahead and show you some of the conditions that we are paying attention to Real quickly, let's go ahead and start with the global sea surface temperatures right over here, where the gyre currently is right now. It's in an area of about 30 to 31 degrees Celsius or so. So we're going to have to pay attention to that because that is a lot of warm water. And you can already see that convection starting to react pretty quickly to the amount of convection, uh, convection that this water is starting to bring up as it starts to evaporate and as it starts to move into the upper parts of the atmosphere and help moisten up the space thanks to water vapor. And But as the system goes on, you're going to notice that it's going to be entering a very good area of water temperatures, 31 to 32 degrees Celsius waters. That is absolutely incredible 
for that part of the Caribbean Sea. And I don't think we saw this much water temperature, this hot water temperature, even last year when we had that record-breaking heat, uh, uh, heat temperatures that brought over 100 degrees of water to Florida in July. It's pretty interesting to see how this whole thing is panning out right here. And the water temperatures are a very big concern for this area of interest. And also in terms of Gordon, the water temperatures are going to be an increasing amount of concern uh, regardless of that. So we're going to have to pay very close attention to that. Let's go ahead and show you the ocean heat content. OHC continues to be a very big issue, and it's going to be an increasing issue as Gordon continues to move into better and better conditions. It's over a lot of dry air. The wind shear has subsided quite a bit. All it needs to do is get out of that stable environment, and then boom, things can start going to basically where it's at right now. It's in an area of about 75-ish OHC. That's good for some conducive strengthening if you take away all the wind shear and take away all the dry air. Then you have an area of conducive strengthening, and that's something you're going to want to pay attention to. And then you ultimately have this area in the Caribbean Sea, where the gyre is right now. It's in an area of about 50 or so OHC when it comes off the coast of Costa Rica and off the coast of Nicaragua. But as it moves further to the north, it's going to be in this massive area of 175 to over 200 OHC areas and a lot of these uh, areas over there. And we're going to have to pay very close attention to that because this does pose a threat potentially to a lot of people and this part of the of the Caribbean Sea generally can bring very conducive strengthening I've been talking to my guys at Storms United. They think there's going to be a very high ceiling with this in the terms of how high can the strength go. There's a very high ceiling with this. How high is that ceiling? We don't know just yet because we haven't had anything tagged and we haven't really seen much organization and development in terms of the tropical sense according to the National Hurricane Center. So we're going to have to wait and see with that. Looking at the wind shear uh, data that we have right here, wind shear where Gordon is right now, very low wind shear there is a little bit to the northwest of it but it's not going to really pull do that much uh, of anything it the problem is the dry air once it gets out of that dry air and once it starts to fill in a bit then you're going to start seeing action and things starting to ramp up over in the Atlantic in terms of the Caribbean. You're still seeing a very big area of very low wind shear as the system will enter the Caribbean Sea over here. We are expected to see a further regression of the wind shear across this part, which will really help ramp up things and really ramp up the intensity of these systems right here, and we're going to have to watch out. Let's go ahead and show you the shear forecast and the moisture forecast courtesy of the European model. Let's go ahead and start with... With the wind shear right here, the 200 to 850 millibar wind shear. Here, uh, the wind shear is in this part of the Caribbean Sea is subsiding. It's expected to continue to subside in the next 24 to 48 hours. And then you have the southern part of the Gulf of Mexico starting to get uh, get less wind shear due to the, uh, this ridge starting to build up and starting to pick up across much the uh, much of Texas, Oklahoma, and not really uh, the just trough over Florida, not really digging down as much as what you would expect right here. And going out four days, you're still seeing that area of relatively low wind shear going on across a lot of these areas. Definitely something you're going to want to pay attention to. And then you have the, and then you are seeing an increase of shear across the Gulf of Mexico over here as another ridge starts to build in. Meanwhile, you're starting to see a weakening of wind shear in the main development region. And we could see an October surprise in the Cape Verde uh, uh, setup over there. Let's go ahead and show you the 700 to 300 millibar moisture as well. We're going to see some a bit of a dry air infusion over here but you're going to see that uh, that ULAC really start to ramp up really start to organize and develop and you're going to see a massive moisture influx across all, this entire area of the Caribbean Sea entire across the entire western half over here you do see a lot of dry air in the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico right there, which is pretty interesting to say the very least. That dry air is expected to subside a little bit, but you do, at least for the starter package, have a very, very good conditions for the system to organize and develop off the gyre right there. And I want to make that very clear to you guys because this is very important, and I want to emphasize this. Let's go ahead and show you some track models with Gordon and some intensity runs as well. Track models have the system or uh, moving uh, towards the... 
uh, to, for the, to the west for a little bit and then starting to make that turn by the end of today as it mainly drifts out to sea and you're starting to see more and more intensity models really re uh, regenerate this and really have the system strengthen up. Just out of curiosity though, I do want to see uh, what, th uh, excuse me, what uh, the 12Z runs but, uh, with the intensity hat. Just I wanted to make sure, uh, sure I'm looking at this. Here's the 12Z runs. A lot more scattered. You had a lot more aggressive. You had some aggressive runs over here. Compare it to the 18Z runs. You're kind of noticing a lot of those uh, aggress those scattered runs are kind of ironed out quite a bit. I've noticed that pretty cl uh, clearly. In terms of the track runs, I don't think there's that much of a, a agreement uh, disagreement. Yeah, there really isn't. So I just want to take a look at those very quickly as Gordon is holding on very quickly. And I know the Gordon Ramsay memes have been kind of uh, popping back up in my Discord server. Shout out to Tristan for doing that. Um, where's the lamb sauce in? Indeed, let's go ahead and show you some ensemble runs as well. We're going to go ahead and zoom out of this real quickly. Okay, that's not exactly what I was intending to happen. Let's zoom in and then zoom out. Unfortunately, that's not going to really cut the mustard. Let's go ahead and go back to over here. I'm tr uh, uh, Go back to over here. It's going to be a bit more. Oh, there we go. Perfect. All right, so here's what we have with the European runs. We're going to use the 0Z uh, we're going to use the 12Z run from yesterday and the 0Z run to kind of show you what we're potentially looking at. Here's what we're looking at at 240 hours out. Here, this is the 12Z runs that we have pulled up for you right here. Let's go ahead and zoom. Okay, I completely wrong sector. I want to zoom out. I want to go back to the, uh, go back over here, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in and show you that 240 hour out. I do apologize for that, and let's go ahead and move this over. Here's what we're looking at right here. We're looking at and, uh, more and more uh, model runs showing data uh, and more and more runs continuing to show all this stuff going on over here. Let's go ahead and pull that up again. Yep, we're seeing, uh, we're seeing more and more of these runs starting to escalate, more and more of these runs starting to ramp up. Here's the 12Z from yesterday. Here's the 0Z for today. You're actually noticing a bit of a shift with these runs as well because before it was a bit more scattered but you could see that there was a general consensus of the system entering into the southwestern Atlantic. Now the 0Z runs have completely shifted and now want the system entering the Gulf which if that does happen that's going to be very bad news as this system will be very likely expected to approach Florida due to the trough and due to the frontal boundary that might throw over there, go over there. So that might be some very bad news for those of you in what, on the west coast of Florida, potentially all the way up to the Big Bend region, but you're going to want to pay attention to that. Let's go ahead and show you the GFS runs real quickly. Let's go ahead and show you the 0Z zero uh, zero right here. The 0Zs zero generally uh, have been a bit of a shift. You're, you are still seeing a bit more of uh, some runs entering, having this enter the Atlantic Ocean, but you're starting to see a more majority runs uh, entering this, the Gulf of Mexico over here. The GFS 12Z is continuing to pick up on that, showing some escalation right here. We're seeing several ensemble runs calling for hurricane strength, and even a few ensemble runs wanting us to go into the western Gulf of Mexico and potentially impact Texas down the road. That's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. I'm not taking, uh, I'm not taking it uh, uh, too seriously because of how far out it is, but it's definitely something you're going to want to watch out for those of you tuning in the the Gulf Coast. So that's what we're looking at. Let's go ahead and show you some model runs right here. I kind of showed you the European a little bit with the shear and the moisture forecast. Let's go ahead and show you the GFS run. GFS is pretty interesting with the gyre system. It, it, it has been starting to organize it a bit more. I have noticed that and it's having the system organize and develop quickly strengthen over here and impact Mexico. Okay, who turned okay, who turned on the ridiculous GFS run once again? Who turned on the 300 hour run once again for the GFS? Who turned on this ridiculous mode again this is like on arcade mode for madden right here it's kind of ridiculous and kind of fantasy land but then you have a zero z run having the system definitely pick up and strengthen definitely organize but into the atlantic ocean let's look at the canadian run 
Canadian run has been pretty interesting. I want to pull up the Zero Z as well, just to kind of compare. But the Zero Z run had the system moving off the western tip of Cuba and then entering Florida, particularly around Tampa Bay, as a Category Two hurricane with winds of, with pressure of 971 millibars. Let's go ahead and show you this one right here, a little bit further to the south, a little bit further to the east in Cuba, making landfall in Collier County, moving into Florida and the Carolinas. So you're going to want to pay attention to this. We're looking at all these scenarios right here where hey things are starting to change now things are starting to enter the Gulf of Mexico instead of the Atlantic you're going to want to pay attention to those and I will absolutely keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel as more data and more information continue to come out be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new it helps us out, helps us get more people engaged with weather, and it helps me make more videos like these to get you guys more informed about the weather. If you want to come hang out with us and talk tropics with us, be sure to join the Storms United Discord server. Link is in the end screen. Also, shout out to Taniel as an official sponsor of the Pat's Path Predictor Patreon and the Pat's Path Predictor channel. If you want to come help me out and support me, be sure to join the Patreon. Link is in the first uh, link in the description down below. And with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.